might open your Bibles again to Psalm 23, and we're going to be speaking tonight on the subject, the shepherd and sheep relationship, the shepherd and sheep relationship. Psalm 23 says, the Lord is my shepherd. And just as a matter of uh, introduction, the relationship of the shepherd, of course, Jesus is the shepherd. If you read John 10, verses 7 and 11, and Hebrews 13, 20 to 21, uh, the Bible talks about him being the good shepherd, talks about him being the chief shepherd. And uh, when he shall appear, that um, you know, we, we're going to be with him, and it's going to be wonderful. So Jesus is the shepherd. So when we read, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Jesus is who is our shepherd in the New Testament. Believers are the sheep. So you and I... Uh, that is our role in our, our relationship of sheep and she shepherd and sheep. We are the sheep. Uh, 1 Peter 2.25 talks about the flock of God and being sheep. And so it's important for us to understand our part in this relationship. Now there are roles. We talked about that, those roles early this morning. And uh, first of all, the roles of a shepherd are, number one, to lead his sheep. And we read... Uh, in Luke 15, about how the shepherd goes out uh, in the story of the parable of the lost sheep. The shepherd goes out and finds the lost sheep, leaves the ninety and nine in the wilderness and goes to find the lost sheep and brings it back to the fold. And that's the purpose of the shepherd, to lead the sheep and to direct the sheep uh, to safety. That shepherd, and the, of course is the Lord Jesus Christ, um, doesn't stop shepherding the sheep after the sheep grow up. In fact, sheep need a shepherd when they're lambs and need a shepherd all throughout their entire life. So it's important that the shepherd lead the sheep and the sheep follow the shepherd. Sheep never outgrow their need for daily leadership from the shepherd. Sheep can get lost very, very easily. Um, it doesn't take very far and uh, they, can, they can start wandering. Uh, they're not the type that just really can find their way back. Okay? And uh, it's, it's important for the shepherd to go after the sheep when they do get lost. Uh, but the, the blessing is, or the key is, is that we follow his lead and we don't stray. We keep our eyes on the shepherd. Secondly, the shepherd and the relationship of shepherd and sheep provides food and water for his sheep. In Psalm 23, 1 and 2, the Bible says, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. And there are two major things that he provides, food and water. Uh, Jesus talked about in Matthew chapter 6, how that as long as we have food and raiment, and you know what, what else do we need? Um, uh, the, the Bible says, Is not the life more than meat, and than drink, and the life more than raiment? Uh, as long as we have our physical needs met, that's all we need. Uh, and so God provides the things that we need in our daily life. Now, the interesting thing about sheep is that they're not like camels or bears where they can store up food for long, time, long periods of time. Sheep require food and water every day. And so that, that speaks of the relationship of a Christian with the Lord on a daily basis. It's not just church. Um, people make a mistake when they depend upon the church to provide their daily needs, their daily food or resource just on Sunday. There's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Now, if we didn't eat physically for a week, we wouldn't feel very well. Some people, you know, they, they, they even struggle with fasting. Um, and, and, and some people can't because it's just by, by them not being without, without food physically, it can do damage. Imagine not eating for a week, or several weeks, or several months. Uh, it would definitely do damage to the life of the sheep. And so, sheep need nourishment every day. Sheep do not seek out nourishment, but must be led to it. And so the shepherd brings the, brings the sheep to the nourishment. Jesus referred to himself, to the woman at the well, as the living water. He told the Pharisees that he was the bread of life. And so the food and water that we have is here. The Bible talks about him being the word of God, Jesus. And so being the shepherd of the sheep, he provides everything that we need right here in the word of God. 
So we should have a daily input as believers in the book, in the Word of God. Sheep will overeat if not stopped and cannot tell the difference between healthy plants and poisonous plants. And so it's important for the shepherd to guide the sheep. That's what this word is. Uh, this, the Bible says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And what it does is it shows us those areas that are of the world that are harmful and dangerous and the things we need to stay away from as God's people. Uh, what, uh, this morning, I, I, as, I was, as I was preaching, I was thinking of the story of, I believe it was um, Elisha. And uh, there was a big pot. They were making a, making a meal for the sons of the prophets that was established by Elijah. And one of the students went out to the wild and got a bunch of gourds and brought them in. And somebody astute enough understood that some of them were poisonous and, and warned those who were making the, the pottage or soup or whatever the meal was that they were, they were getting ready to put before all of that school of the prophets, and they said, there's death in the pot. You know, we as believers need God to show us the death in the pot of this world. And so we, you know, we, we're sheep. People are innocent. People, sheep are, are very docile and very impressionable animals, and sheep don't know. They've got to be taught. They've got to be shown. And God's given us all the direction to show us those things in our life that are harmful or those things of this world that are harmful that could destroy us and food that we would ingest that would harm us spiritually. Jesus is the key to our survival. And uh, as, as we stay close to the shepherd, we can be guaranteed to have fresh water and plenty of food. The next thing in the shepherd, in the shepherd relationship is that a shepherd should clean his sheep. We talked about how sheep uh, are constantly getting dirty, and they, they must be cleaned. And that dirty sheep attract bugs. Bugs irritate the sheep. And get underneath that wool and get into their skin. And so then the, they, they start to scratch on trees and start to scratch on fences. And that causes sores. And then filthiness gets into the sores and causes sores to become infected. And it's just an, it's a vicious circle. Without the cleansing of the shepherd, those sheep get sick. And then they become contagious. And eventually they can die. So it's important to have a cleansing, and there's two cleansings that we mentioned this morning. One, the cleansing of a one-time cleansing, and that's found in 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verses 9 to 11, and Titus 3, 5, by the washing of regeneration of the Word and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. Salvation, trusting Jesus Christ, not by works of righteousness, which we have done, but according to His mercy, he saves us by the washing of regeneration of the Word and by the renewing of the Holy Ghost. And so when we are saved and trust Christ as our Savior, God puts all of our sins, all of our, our, our uncleanness under the blood of Christ. Amen. Thank God for that. And so we are cleansed permanently from having to pay for our sins in the awful place God calls hell. But save people walk in a wicked world, and we pick up dirt. We have filth all around us. And when you're in an environment of filth, you can't get away from picking up some of that filth. We're in the world, and we're not supposed to be of the world, but because we're in the world, it rubs off on us. And so we pick up uncleanness. And <clears throat> the Bible tells us, Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word, thy word have I hid in mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. John 15, now are you clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. And so we've got to allow God to cleanse us from his word. 1 John 1, 9, if, it says, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So it's important that the sheep be clean and cleansed, and God is the only one that can do that. Sheep cannot clean themselves. 
And we, we understand that the Bible tells us, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. You couldn't save yourself if you wanted to. You couldn't clean your life up. You couldn't stay clean as a Christian if you wanted to. Because we're sinners by nature. We're sheep according to God. And so we need the shepherd to cleanse us on a regular basis. Then the shepherd should defend his sheep. Uh, there are dangers. There are all kinds of things that uh, predators in this world who prey upon innocent sheep. And sheep have no mechanism to protect themselves. They're not like animals like a, a lion or a bear. Uh, they don't have claws. They don't have um, a shell to go into. They don't have a, a scent that they can spray like a skunk. They don't have uh, tines like a porcupine that if they stick in you are create great damage. Um, I can't remember somebody I remember telling me that telling me that they had a dog that uh, got tangled up with a, a porcupine and that dog I'm sure will never ever do that again um, because of that defense. Sheep are helpless. And by the way, uh, although sheep are, are they're not stupid animals. We're not we're, we're intelligent beings. God has given us intelligence. Yet, we're defenseless when it comes to this world. We need the Lord, the Spirit of God, to control us because of our nature. We have a sinful nature. And <clears throat> the only way for us to counteract our, our helplessness and hopelessness as not only lost people trusting Christ, but saved people trying to stay holy. If we don't have the Lord, the shepherd, we're sunk. The Lord is our defense against the wiles of the devil. Without the shepherd's protection, the sheep has no hope of survival. We quoted 1 Peter 5, 8. Be sober, be vigilant, for your adversary the devil walketh about as a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. Satan's coming after us. He's gunning after us. And, and so uh, we, uh, Jesus told us that we are to go out as sheep among wolves. And so he told us to be wise as serpents and harmless as doves. There are a lot of false teachers, a lot of false prophets. Uh, and they raise themselves up and they try to draw the sheep out of the fold and try to get a following in a different direction. And so... To have victory over sin, temptation, and discouragement, it's only found by staying close to the shepherd. A, a wolf, a false teacher, is just as dangerous to sheep as a lion and Satan. Then number five, a shepherd should heal his sheep. Psalm 23.3. But it's not talking about physical healing as much as it's talking about inward healing. Sheep are very fragile emotionally, internally. They, are, they have a, a mechanism within them or a weakness, an inner weakness, in that they give up easily and will not fight back. They just lay down and just take it. And so small trials are turned into big ones. Everything is, everything is, is a catastrophe. And we as God's people need hope. We need our Savior, our Shepherd. Uh, we need His encouragement. And uh, he, he whispers in our ear, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. He loves us. And He is with us through every point in our life. Uh, verse 4 says, Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Verse 3 says, He restoreth my soul. When, we, when we're down, when we, when, when, when we are, are put in a spot and we don't know what to do and we're, we're afraid and we, as sheep will do, 
will lay down and just give up and eventually expire. The shepherd kneels down, picks up the sheep, encourages that sheep, and makes sure it's got plenty of strength, and then sets it back down on its legs once it knows it's got the strength to go on, and puts it back in the, in the fold. And so it's important to understand the, the, the healing that can come from the shepherd. When we have fallen in our lives, we can either lie there and cry and complain or look around for the shepherd. And the wonderful thing is that he is never far away. Then there's the role of the sheep. The role of the sheep is a sheep should know the shepherd's voice. John 10, 1 to 5 that says a couple of times that my sheep know my voice. As God's people, we should be keen to be able to hear the, the, the voice of God. There are many shepherds outside the flock, thieves and robbers, as Jesus talked about, who entered in not through the door of the sheepfold, but came in, came in another way. And <clears throat> as sheep, those voices should be strange to us. We should be able to listen carefully to the voice of the shepherd. The noise of the voices 